October 2014, a conference room in Europe. The Angular team takes the stage at NG Europe, and the room is packed with developers who have built their careers on Angular JS. What happens next will fracture an entire ecosystem. Angular 2 is a complete rewrite. The team announces, not an upgrade, not a migration path, a full rewrite. Everything you know gone. Your dollar scope deleted. Your directives rebuilt from scratch. Your entire code base start over. The room goes quiet. Then Twitter explodes. Within hours, developers are posting variation of the same sentiment. Screw you, Angular. That moment, that single announcement, marked the beginning of Angular's collapse. Not because the new version was bad, because the Angular team just told millions of developers their framework had an expiration date. Here's the question Angular never answered convincingly: Why a complete rewrite instead of incremental improvements? React managed it, Vue managed it, even jQuery managed major version updates without burning everything down. Maybe in a different timeline. But Angular 2 wasn't an evolution; it was a revolution. The framework introduced an entirely new component-based architecture, eliminating familiar concepts like two-way data binding with dollar scope. Directives as you knew them rebuilt completely, and then came the kicker: Angular 2 required TypeScript, not recommended, not suggested, practically required it. Google briefly experimented with its own language, AdScript. But abandoned it and merged everything into TypeScript instead. If your team didn't know TypeScript, and most didn't in 2014, you had to learn an entirely new language just to use the new version of a framework you already knew. The Angular team's defense: the old architecture couldn't support modern performance needs. The JavaScript ecosystem had evolved. The rewrite was necessary. Maybe they were right. But here's what they missed: you can't force millions of developers to throw away their work and call it progress. While Angular developers were staring at their soon-to-be obsolete code bases, React developers were building, and that contrast tells you everything about why React won. React took the opposite approach on almost every decision Angular made. TypeScript optional; you could use it if you wanted. But plain JavaScript worked perfectly fine. Migration gradual. You could adopt React piece by piece, converting one component at a time without touching the rest of your application. React wasn't forcing anyone to rewrite anything. It was meeting developers where they were. You had a jQuery app, cool. Drop in a React component. You wanted to experiment, build one feature with React and leave the rest alone. You needed to ship tomorrow. Keep using what you know. It wasn't just philosophical; it was practical. While Angular developers were calculating migration costs and timelines, React developers were shipping features. Angular demanded you rewrite everything. React let you migrate piece by piece. Guess which one developers chose? By 2016, JavaScript expert Eric Elliot ran a developer satisfaction poll. The results. Only 17% of developers who used Angular 2 would choose it again for their next project. Let that number sink in. 83% of developers who tried Angular 2 didn't want to use it again. That's not a framework problem. That's a trust problem. The market share numbers tell a similar story. In the early years, Angular and Angular JS had higher usage, but React later became more widely used. React was used by 31.3% of developers. Compared with 30.7 percent for Angular or Angular JS, over subsequent years, React's lead widened further in developer usage. Some companies publicly documented the switch. Small improvements wrote that when Angular 2 was announced, no clear migration strategy seemed to be available. So they began migrating their large Angular JS app to React. Even large products like Kibana tracked an Angular to React migration publicly in Elastic's report. Developer Sumit Kohli documented what he called millions of dollars lost by companies that couldn't migrate their Angular JS code bases in real time. Technical debt became technical bankruptcy overnight. Be sure to check out that blog. The Angular ecosystem fractured. Old Angular JS developers stayed on version 1.x because migration was impossible. Earlier Angular 2 adopters were stuck on a beta that kept breaking, and new developers they were picking React. 
In theory, Angular offered a migration path. In practice, it wasn't a migration at all. The official tool, ng-upgrade, didn't convert AngularJS applications. It merely allowed old and new code to run side by side. Here's what migrating from AngularJS to Angular 2 actually looked like. Every controller had to become a component. Every service had to be rewritten with the new dependency injection syntax. Every template had to be converted to the new binding system. And if your team didn't know TypeScript, add weeks for training. One company's story captures the absurdity. Faced with AngularJS end of life, Chess.com didn't even attempt a full migration to AngularJS. Instead, they began rewriting large parts of their application from AngularJS directly to Vue.js, page by page, over many months. In practice, moving to an entirely different framework proved more realistic than upgrading within the Angular ecosystem. Think about that. For real production apps, AngularJS to Angular wasn't a migration at all. It was a rewrite, and many teams chose to rewrite somewhere else. And while Angular developers were stuck in migration hell, React developers were adding features. The opportunity cost wasn't just the rewrite, it was everything you couldn't build while you were rewriting. Here's what we need to be honest. Was TypeScript really the factor that killed Angular's dominance? No. But it became the symbol of everything wrong with Angular's approach. TypeScript itself wasn't the problem. By 2024, TypeScript is everywhere. Even React developers use it, though it remains optional. The problem was forcing it on developers in 2014 when most JavaScript developers had never touched it. But let's be clear about the other factors. Angular 2 remained more complex than React even after the rewrite. React's component model was simpler to understand. React had a gentler learning curve. And Vue.js emerged as an even easier alternative pulling developers who found both Angular and React too heavy. The TypeScript requirement was the visible face of a deeper philosophical problem. Angular said, we know what's best for you. Rewrite everything our way. React said, use what works for you. We'll fit into your workflow. One approach respects developer autonomy. The other demands obedience. So no, TypeScript alone didn't dethrone Angular, but it marked the moment when many developers realized something had changed. Angular was no longer working for them. They were working for Angular. Angular didn't die. It's still here. Still maintained by Google. Still used in plenty of enterprise applications. But it lost its crown and never got it back. React's dominance in 2024 traces directly back to the moment Angular broke developer trust in 2014. The numbers tell the story. In 2024, React is used by 40.6% of developers according to Stack Overflow surveys. Angular sits at 17.2%. So what's the lesson here? You can have the most technical superior framework in the world. You can be backed by Google. You can have the best engineers making careful architectural decisions. But if you force your community to throw away everything they have built and start over, don't be surprised when they start over with someone else's framework instead. Developer trust isn't a technical problem, it's a human one. And humans remember betrayal. We have seen this pattern before. In a previous video next JS, we talked about how architectural decisions made for platform goals can quietly push developers into corners they never agreed to be in. Be sure to check out that one if you haven't yet and like, comment and subscribe to our channel. Developers have long memories and Angular 2 became the two words that meant one thing, betrayal.